This is the Chefs Inc. News Podcast. News for chefs, created by chefs. Guten Tag and welcome back to Chefs Inc. News. I'm Chef Antonio and wunderbar do we have something incredible to share with you today. And I'm Dr. Sophia. Listeners, forget everything you thought you knew about growing the world's most expensive spice. Today's story is about innovation, automation, and how one Calgary man is turning his home into a saffron gold mine. Yeah, yeah, we're talking about Alberta's red gold. And trust me, this is going to change how you think about where your ingredients come from. So, Antonio, let me paint the picture here. Vikash Sangwan, an IT professional from Calgary, has developed a revolutionary method to grow saffron, the spice that costs up to $50,000 per kilogram, right from his home using AI-automated growing boxes. $50,000 per kilo? That's rictic. That's more expensive than gold. You know, as a chef, I've always treated saffron like liquid gold in my kitchen. But growing it at home in Calgary, in the middle of Alberta, this is, this is revolutionary. Absolutely. And here's what makes this even more significant from a business perspective. The global saffron market is currently valued at approximately $630 million in 2024, with projections to reach $1.94 billion by 2030. That's a compound annual growth rate of 6.4%. And let me tell you something about saffron in the restaurant world. When I see it selling retail at $50 per gram, that's about $2,200 to $6,700 per pound, depending on quality. For fine dining establishments, this is one of our most expensive ingredients. Exactly. And currently, 88% of the world's saffron comes from Iran, with Afghanistan producing most of the rest. What Songwan is proposing could fundamentally disrupt the supply chain. So, Sophia, explain to me, how is this Calgary innovator actually doing this? Because traditionally, saffron needs very specific conditions, yeah? Great question. Songwan has created an automated growing box that uses AI tools to regulate three critical factors, temperature, light, and humidity. He keeps the environment dark initially and maintains the temperature around 22 degrees Celsius, now, that's about 72 Fahrenheit for our American listeners. But this is fascinating because saffron traditionally comes from regions like Kashmir, Iran, where they have very specific climate conditions. That's the innovation here, Antonio. As the harvest approaches, he adjusts the system, lowering the temperature and introducing light. The AI automation removes the guesswork and human error from the equation. Impressive. You know what impresses me most? He's also had successful experiments growing it outside in Alberta soil. Can you imagine? Canadian farmers could diversify from wheat, barley, and canola to growing a crop worth $50,000 per kilogram. The economic implications are staggering. Let me give you some numbers. According to the University of Vermont's agricultural studies, saffron growers can potentially gross up to $100,000 per acre, assuming retail prices around $19 per gram. That's compared to traditional crops where farmers might make a few hundred to a few thousand per acre. Wonderbar, but there must be challenges, yeah? Because if it was so easy, everyone would be doing it. Absolutely. The labor-intensive part is the harvest. Each flower produces only three stigmas. Those are the red threads we call saffron. It takes approximately 75,000 flowers to produce just one pound of saffron. Sangwan and his wife currently handpick each stigma individually. That's rictic. I've seen this process. In traditional saffron farms, entire families wake up before dawn during the six-week harvest season to pick flowers while they're still fresh. 
But here's where it gets even more interesting. Sungguan is developing a robotic arm to automate the harvesting process. Once he perfects that technology, he plans to scale up and expand to other high-value superfoods. Cordyceps mushrooms, ashwagandha, Chinese medicinal herbs. Now let me tell you why this matters so much for us chefs and the restaurant professionals. Saffron is not just expensive, it's irreplaceable in certain dishes. Talk to us about that, Antonio. How do chefs actually use saffron? Oh, where do I start? Spanish paella, Italian risotto a la milanese, French bouillabaisse, Persian tadig, Indian biryani. These dishes need saffron. It gives this beautiful golden color, this slightly sweet, earthy, almost hay-like aroma that you cannot replicate with turmeric or other substitutes. And from a cost perspective for restaurants? It's a major consideration. A fine dining restaurant might use a quarter gram of saffron for one signature dish. At current prices of $6 to $12 per gram retail, that's $150 to $300 just for the saffron in one plate. Multiply that across service. Right, and this is where local Canadian production becomes transformative. Current saffron prices in major U.S. cities like New York range from $7 to $12 per gram retail, with wholesale prices between $3,500 and $4,500 per kilogram. If Canadian farmers can produce quality saffron domestically, we're looking at fresher product, shorter supply chains, potentially lower costs, and, this is important, transparency in sourcing. Exactly. The global saffron market is plagued with adulteration issues. Studies show that up to 40% of saffron sold globally may be mixed with other materials or artificially colored. Having locally grown, traceable Canadian saffron changes the game entirely. And think about the culinary trends. We're seeing more chefs wanting to highlight local ingredients, wanting to tell stories about where their food comes from. Imagine putting on your menu Alberta Red Gold Saffron Risotto, grown right here in Calgary. The storytelling potential alone has value. Consumers are increasingly willing to pay premium prices for locally sourced, sustainably grown ingredients with transparent supply chains. So, Sophia, let's talk strategy. What does this mean for different segments of the hospitality industry? Yeah, this is important for restaurant operators, especially fine dining and upscale casual. This could mean cost savings and menu innovation opportunities. Correct. But let's also consider the opportunity for farmers and agricultural entrepreneurs. Sangwan is openly sharing his methodology. He stated he wants to teach Albertan farmers how to diversify their crops. That's the spirit of innovation, not keeping it secret, but saying, let's build an industry together. From an investment perspective, this aligns with several major trends we're tracking. One, the controlled environment agriculture market, indoor farming using AI and automation, is projected to reach $11.4 billion by 2028. Two, high-value specialty crops are increasingly attractive to farmers looking to diversify income streams. Three, the locavore movement continues gaining momentum, with consumers willing to pay 20 to 30 percent premiums for locally sourced specialty ingredients. And don't forget the environmental angle. Less transportation means lower carbon footprint. Growing in controlled environments means no pesticides, predictable year-round supply, not just during the six-week harvest season. Excellent point. Traditional saffron farming is seasonal and weather-dependent. Controlled environment agriculture provides consistent supply, which is crucial for restaurant planning and menu development. You know what else? This could revitalize Alberta, rural Alberta. Small farmers with just a few acres could set up these automated boxes, generate significant income, and stay competitive in modern agriculture. The economics are compelling. Let's say a farmer invests twenty to $30,000 in setup costs for an automated growing system. 
If they can produce even two kilograms of high-quality saffron in the first year at wholesale prices around $30,000 per kilogram, they're looking at $60,000 in revenue. That's a potentially rapid return on investment. Genau! And the Sanguam perfects the robotic harvesting, the labor costs, which are the biggest expense in saffron production, drop dramatically. Now, Antonio, we need to provide some balance here. This isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. What should aspiring saffron growers be aware of? That's richtig, Sofia. First, quality matters immensely. As a chef, I can tell the difference between premium-grade saffron and lower quality immediately. If Canadian producers flood the market with inferior product, it damages the entire reputation. Exactly. The saffron market has strict grading systems. ISO 3632 standards classify saffron based on crocin content, which determines color strength. Category 1 is the highest grade, requiring specific chemical compositions. Genau! Second consideration, market competition. Iran dominates because they've 